Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order! Now introduce Pastor Kendrick to bring us our invocation. Hey, let's see some smiles out there, huh? Look at your neighbor and say, wow, what an exciting time today. Isn't that right? Come on, let me tell your neighbor that. Everybody's involved in this. You know, these, these young men have come, but everybody in this place is involved in their lives in some way. What an exciting time to see that happen. Let's welcome the Lord here. Father, we just thank you for your presence in this place. You said where two or more are gathered in your name, there you are. And I thank you that you have charge of our lives and what goes on today. We yield that to you as we come to this celebration time. A graduation is a celebration of what these young men have done and accomplished over these months. We thank you for your presence. We ask you to just lead everything that's done, encourage everybody in this place, and above all, encourage these young men as they're starting out on a new step in their life. And we give you thanks for that, for your wonder and your beauty and your majesty. Amen. You can be seated. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Trent Moorbutter, Vice President for Instruction, uh, Chief Academic Officer at Nash Community College. And it is indeed my pleasure, on behalf of Dr. Carver, our President, and our Board of Trustees, to welcome you to Nash Community College for this ceremony this afternoon. Candidates, we trust and, and, and believe uh, and are, are very proud of the things that take place on our campus and our students as a whole. Um, but, but real importantly, at times like this, we, we trust that the training and education that you have received are going to be there when you really need them. And that each of you will be there when you need each other. And that as you are running, as our president says, as most people are running away from an emergency situation, when you are moving as quickly as you can to an emergency situation, we all trust and we all will rest more easily knowing that you have received the training you need to help make you as successful as possible. On behalf of Dr. Carver and the, and the Board of Trustees, I congratulate you and we look forward to seeing you being successful in our community. Congratulations. I'll be in 
It is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Adam G. Lowe. Our speaker today has resided in Nash County his entire life. He and his wife, Brooks, have been married for 18 years, and they have three children, Noah, McKenna, and Zachary. Mr. G. Lowe has 16 years of criminal justice experience. His, he began his career with the NC Division of Prisons. After four years, he became a sworn law enforcement officer with Nash County Sheriff's Office. Mr. Gilo was assigned to Patrol Division in 2001 and was promoted to investigator in 2004. In 2011, Mr. Gilo was assigned to Patrol Division as a corporal. Mr. Gilo has recently became employed here at Nash Community College and will take on the role of BLET instructor and coordinator. Our speaker obtained his associate degree in criminal justice from Edgecombe Community College. He obtained his bachelor's degree in criminal justice administration from Mountain State University. Mr. Gilo became certified as a general instructor in 2008 and has been an instructor in Nash Community College Basic Law Enforcement Academy since 2009. Mr. Gilo enjoys fishing, golf, and family activities. Please join me in welcoming our speaker, Adam Gilo. Thank you, Mr. Mims. I'd like to welcome everybody today. Um, this is truly a proud day for these graduates. I was in the same seat that they were in about 12 and a half, 13 years ago, and I know how proud I was. Um, they have put forth a tremendous amount of work in the last 27 weeks, and I've been fortunate to get to know these guys. They have been hard workers. They ask good questions, and we usually have a pretty good time and learn a whole lot about law enforcement in the process. Um, but these guys have really worked hard over the last 27 weeks. I'd also like to thank the families that are here. I know from experience, because I was married and had small kids when I went through the academy, that it's really, really difficult on the families because of all the hard work that these guys do. They're in class all night, some of them are working during the day, and then they've got school responsibilities and studies as well. And those families that are here are to be commended because you have kind of gone through this process with them. Um, and you have been a part of the process and are a lot more to process than what you even realize. But one thing I would like to challenge the families here, that these guys are going out into a world where there's a lot of significant challenges to the law enforcement community, to law enforcement officers. And these guys are gonna put their lives on that line every single day. And they're gonna come home every single day and they're gonna need your continued support because it's a tough job, it's a wonderful job, it's one of the best jobs I've ever done, and I can tell you it's very, very, very demanding. And so they'll need your continued support. Um, today I'd like to just challenge you and challenge the cadets. And, you know, we talk about what makes a good police officer. What are those characteristics that police officers need to have? And we can think about probably 20 or 30 off the top of our head. We think about honor, integrity, high ethical standards, commitment to family, commitment to the department, commitment to our fellow officers, a good work ethic. Some of us may even include bravery, courage, exceptional aptitude in handling stressful situations. All those are good characteristics of a police officer. All those are what those in the general public and even the police officers and those in law enforcement themselves expect from police officers. But what makes an excellent police officer? What makes an outstanding police officer? What makes them stand out ahead of the others and shine in the community? And my challenge to you guys today here at your graduation is, you know, all those things, they lead to good community service. But to me, and from what I've seen in my law enforcement career, what makes an officer excel are their leadership qualities. What they bring to the table besides just those everyday officer qualities that we see. And I have a couple of quick statements to read to you that kind of sum up what law enforcement leadership really is. A leader is one who serves. Serving and supporting unleash much more energy, talent, and commitment than commanding and controlling. And that's a powerful statement. A leader is one who serves. He serves the community. He serves his department. But he has a servant's heart. His job isn't to go out there 
and make a million dollars. His job isn't to go out there and ride around in the patrol car all day and just wave at the community. His job is to go out there and serve that community. And to be a leader, you have to be one who's willing to serve, serve your community. Leadership is everyone's business. Leadership is not a position or a place. It is an attitude and a sense of responsibility for making a difference. Think about that last part of that statement. An attitude and a sense of responsibility for making a difference. When we have academy classes, and I usually teach several of the blocks of instruction, but one of my first nights when I have a new class, uh, one of the first nights that I have them anyway, I'll always ask them after a break or sometime during class, hey, why do y'all want to be in law enforcement? What is it about law enforcement that has drawn you here that makes you want to go through this 27 weeks, this hard work that you got to do? It's difficult academically. They've got to pass every single test. They don't get any breaks. They've got to do all the physical training. They don't get a break on that either. They have to complete it all. And they have to complete it all in the right amount of time. But what is it that makes you want to go through this to go out and be a servant, to be a public servant, to be a police officer, a deputy sheriff? And most of the time they'll tell me, you know, Mr. Gilo, Corporal Gilo, uh, you know, I want to serve the community. I want to help people. I want to help others. And, you know, that's the kind of servant's heart attitude. Maintain that. Keep that servant's heart attitude, that service to the community. You're going to need it every single day. And you're going to have brother officers and sisters. you got those of us that you know from the academy, those of us at other departments that are all here. We're here to help you. We're here to help you maintain that, and we're going to help us do the same job together. But what kind of a leader are you going to be in law enforcement? Do you think you can be a leader? You should. Can you be a leader the first day? Everybody can be a leader. Because it doesn't take rank or statute or statute or status or anything like that within your department to be a leader. How do you lead? What can I do my first day? What can I do at my department to demonstrate leadership my first day? I'm just a new guy. You know, everybody else has a serving sense pen, and most of y'all have seen those on law enforcement shirts. You know, serving sense, 2001, 1995, depending on how much service time that they have. You know, it's my first day. My pen doesn't even have a year on it. It says serving since lunch. You know, I just got here. <laughs> what can I do? What can I do to be a leader when I'm just a new guy? How can I demonstrate leadership? A couple of suggestions for me, and you can take this and go with it. Your appearance, how you look. You guys look sharp today. You look sharp in the academy. Don't lose that. When you show up to work, your uniform should look good. Your shoes should look good. Your duty gear should look good. Not for you, just you. Hopefully it's in working order, but not just for you, for everybody. Because what does the community expect? And what does your department expect? What does your coworkers expect? What kind of a job are you going to do? And that says a lot about you as a person when you come in looking sharp, looking professional. Be a leader. Be the sharpest one on your platoon, not the one who just gets by every time there's an inspection. An inspection. That's being a leader. That's being a leader in your department. A big one, attitude. Every day that you come to work is not going to be your best day. Every day, everybody has problems outside of work. They have things outside of work that go on. It happens. But what is your attitude when you walk in the door? What is your attitude at shift change? The attitude can be good at the beginning of the day, but what is your attitude? You've worked 12 hard hours, and I can tell everybody in here, I've worked 12, 18, 20. I worked on the Bowling homicide for the sheriff's office. I was on the crime scene for 22 hours straight. Those are long days. You're going to have days like that sometimes. But what happens when it's that 12th hour and that report call comes out, when that wreck comes out and you've got to go do a wreck investigation. Where's your attitude then? How is your attitude? Being a leader. Having that positive attitude, knowing that it's part of your job. It's not just a job, it's part of your career. It's what you want to do, it's what you work hard for. Have that good positive attitude. That's part of being a leader. And what about your actions? 
on duty, off duty. No matter what you do, you're in the public eye. And once your community gets to know you, once your community learns who you are, they're going to see you. It doesn't mean when you go home and you take that uniform off and you put your gun in the safe and you go to the store that they don't recognize you as a police officer. Because everybody in here that knows police officers, you recognize that person. Hey, he's a police officer. He's a deputy sheriff. And your actions, both on duty and especially off duty, really say a lot about what kind of leader you are and what kind of a person you are. So those three things are my suggestions to you. But there's a lot of ways that we can be leaders in our department from the first day that we walk in the door to the day we hit our 30 years and we get to retire and we get to go fishing or whatever it is we like to do and draw our pension. Be a leader. You're held to a high standard at all times by the public. And understand that. And you should be. Your code of ethics, hey, that's a guy that helps you out. What have I told y'all guys in class about the code of ethics? Are you going to remember everything in those manuals that you learned in this academy? Probably not. Nobody knows everything in that general statute book. There's no way you can know every single thing there. But if you use common sense and you apply code of, the, your code of ethics, that should be a guide for you every time you go to a call, every time you stop a car, every time you deal with somebody in the public, every time you deal with somebody in your department. Use that as a guide. When you set out to make a difference, your actions inspire others to follow. You lead first by example. Lead first. Be a leader. Be an example to others. Experience doesn't matter. You can be a leader at your department your first day. Congratulations on your graduation. Good afternoon. I'm Cadet Thomas, platoon leader of the National Community College's 37th BLE graduating class. On January 8th of this year, I walked into a classroom with 30 name plates on desks with names that I didn't recognize, wondering what I had gotten myself into. Now, I've taken my fair share of college courses in the past, but never one that was quite like this. What made this course different was meeting what seemed like every night of the week for five hours at a time. We also met on Saturdays from anywhere from four hours for a PT assessment up to as many as 15 hours for blocks such as firearms and driver training. Another difference is the fact that every class was for the most part in the same classroom with the same group of cadets, with the only thing changing being the instructor. The other, only instructor, instructors that we really saw the entire duration of the class were the PT instructors, which I can tell you we usually weren't too thrilled about seeing. When spending this much time every week with the same group of cadets, you start to become a family. Like any family, though, we had our fair share of difficulties and disagreements. These are the things that didn't come with any family, but are also the things that brought us closer together. I myself am proud to be a part of this family because together, we are able to accomplish many things. Sergeant King, one of our PT instructors, said to us on the first night of PT, some people are meant to be the police and some are meant to call the police. This statement, among others, stuck with me the entire duration of this academy. We all join this academy for an opportunity to help others and to be a part of the brotherhood that is law enforcement. Learning from the teachings and experiences of many of our great instructors, like Corporal Gilo up here, we now have the opportunity to do just that. Not only did they follow the requirements of North Carolina training and standards placed upon them for teaching these courses, they went above and beyond to make sure that we leave this academy with the training that we need to stay alive. 27 weeks of school is an extremely long time, and without these nine cadets sitting down here and the many cadets that started this academy with us but didn't quite reach the finish line, I'm not entirely sure that I would make it through. Everyone has their moments of weakness, but luckily we had each other to lean on and give us the strength and courage to push through the tough times and rise above. And for that, guys, I'm truly thankful. Thank you. Cadet Thomas was our platoon leader. And again, we started out with 30 cadets. And uh, he did an excellent job wrangling 30 cadets all the way down to 10. <laughs> I would like to take a moment to recognize some departments that are here with us, Rocky Mount, Nashville, Sheriff's Department here in Nash County, um, and just thank them for their efforts and their service to these, this academy. Uh, without them, we wouldn't have sponsorships. Without them, these guys wouldn't have jobs. 
So we thank you for coming and supporting our cadets and our college and our efforts here for the community. I've now got the honor of introducing for the presentation of their certificates the 37th Rise. Basic Law Enforcement Graduating Class of Nash Community College. I would ask my gentleman here to help me give out our certificates. Cadet Dylan M. Crumpton. Cadet Tyler B. Foxworth. Cadet Tyler N. Hux. Cadet James M. Manning. Cadet Trevor R. McGee. Cadet Timothy B. Mims, Jr. Cadet Juan Navarez. Cadet Nathan W. Thomas. Cadet Thomas J. Vesh, Jr. Cadet Matthew D. Walton. Let's give this group of graduates another round of applause. If you would please rise for our benediction.